Welcome all to Star Edge Academy. So in last video, we'll discuss the importance of photosynthesis. In this video, we'll continue the process. So in this video, we need to look at why the chlorophyll look like green or the plant or leaves are green in color. So in order to understand that, we need to know a little bit about light. As we know, light is the electromagnetic spectrum. The visible light is a tiny portion of this long spectrum which is ranges from 400 to 700 nanometer in length. So this is the wavelength, I think you may uh, be familiar with that in physics classes. So uh, what we perceive, what the human eye can perceive is 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer. The 400 nanometer light are appear as a blue or violet in color and the lost, the 700 nanometer wavelength light can be appeared uh, as red in color. So the uh, pattern of light uh, that is WIBGR which we will be very known and familiar. So now we need to understand why the plants or the leaves are green in color. So they all have a pigment which is known as chlorophyll. Okay, So the chlorophyll pigments are many, chlorophyll A, B are common out of it. So these pigments are responsible for this green color. So you may be thinking that these pigments are absorbing the green color so that the plant is appear as green, but it may not true. These pigments are absorbs the color in the blue region as well as in the red region. The middle region, which is the uh, green to yellow color light, which is not absorbed, which is completely reflected. So our eye perceive only the light which is reflected from the object. So the chloroplast contains chlorophyll. Chlorophyll reflects the green color uh, which is uh, in the center portion of the visible range and it absorbs well the either blue color as well as the red color so that it appears green in color. So now if you ask which wavelength is responsible for photosynthesis or uh, by the plant to produce food, you must say either the blue or red, you should not say green. And we are calling that the plants are autotrophs. Why we are saying those are autotrophs? Because they are synthesizing food, right? This answer uh, can be known for anyone. But we need to think about, we can also produce food in the food factories or in our kitchen. But what is the different? by the plant producing food and we producing food. When we are producing a food, for example, when we are making an ice cream, we are using the raw ingredients like milk, sugar, etc. and flav flavoring agents, so, so on and so forth. So if you closely look at the raw ingredients, those are food. For example, the milk is a food which contains proteins, carbohydrates and lipids. And sugar is, of course, a food but if you closely look at the photosynthetic reactions, once uh, you may find that the raw materials for the photosynthesis are carbon dioxide and water molecule, nothing more than that. So these molecules are utilized and the energy is utilized in the form of light, which is light energy. And plants use this light energy to convert these simple chemicals like carbon dioxide and water into a complex chemical molecules such as glucose. So the glucose contains six carbon atoms, 12 hydrogen atoms and six uh, carbon at, uh, oxygen atoms bonded with a specific pattern. So you may be thinking that uh, or you may be know that the glucose is stores energy that is an energy rich molecule. When we are processing the glucose, we are getting energy out of the glucose molecule. So in glucose molecule, where the energy is stored? So these, uh, the energy which is stored in the form of bonds which is produced uh, during the photosynthesis reaction. So once we, we started processing the glucose, we are ending up the production of ATP and NADH, NADPH. So in photosynthetic reaction also, we are uh, learning that 
the uh, light energy first of all trapped in the form of ATPs and NADPH. Then these NA, uh, ATPs and NADPH are utilized to convert carbon dioxide and H2O into carbohydrates. So ATP and NADPH are very important products that we need to understand. For that, we need a little chemical knowledge. So in next video, we'll uh, learn how the ATP stores energy and how the NADPH stores energy in it and how that can be utilized. Thank you.